This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by PortCityCoin.com You may be aware that New Hampshire has a Libertarian Party caucus in its state house. That is, three state reps who are Libertarian Party members, and specifically not Republicans or Democrats anymore. What you may not know is that they reportedly walked out of uh, a House session in protest. And I'm kind of surprised this didn't get more attention. Someone at an LP news conference in front of the State House mentioned this in passing well after it had happened. My understanding is they were protesting against the House leadership's uh, proposed budget or something connected to that. Ever since I watched a presidential candidate, Andre Maru, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, give a speech in the early 90s, I've always kind of looked at the LP with a jaundiced eye. In fact, actually, it goes back further than that. The day that I was, uh, I guess that I first arrived at college at OU in 84, uh, a Libertarian Party petition gatherer approached me and asked me for marijuana. <laughs> What those two were doing, Maru and the petitioner, it wasn't wrong, but there was something about them that struck me as dismissive, and I've been dismissing the Libertarian Party ever since, with good cause. Uh, but with Daryl Perry and Roger Paxton at the helm in New Hampshire's Libertarian Party, they're at least making some waves, and if they're doing that, that means that later they could be doing more. Uh, you know, waves precede the storm, sort of. So their actions, uh, the things that the LP has been doing in New Hampshire, have enabled me to make calls to the local talk radio. It's given me something to talk about, you know, on days where I had otherwise maybe run out of ideas. You know, I, I can say, hey, did you hear that, uh, you know, a third state rep switched over to the Libertarian Party? And uh, t talk radio hosts get excited about that sort of thing. And there are two or three shows in New Hampshire, in addition to Free Talk Live, where I can do that. Just call in. Change the subject. I worry, though, that um, people, if they're too eager to jump over to the LP, th this is really, a, this is really a, a technique for state reps who aren't planning on running again. Because if, if you're going to run again, then, you know, as an, a Libertarian Party member, your chances of winning are under 4% at best. So far, the, the biggest successes in New Hampshire, or the top five biggest successes, have come from just free staters running as Republicans or Democrats, mostly at the state house, but also some at, at, in other local races where they don't have to declare a party affiliation. One question I have that I think would be of in, that I hope some of you in the LP are watching this and can answer this, but uh, how much value do, would you say you put on people switching parties to the LP who are just, you know, minor public figures like me as opposed to sitting politicians. If if I'm sure that you can get something out of it, and I think it looks like everyone's getting enough out of it, uh, I might switch too, you know, like if there's going to, if we're going to be having news conferences where, it, where it's more than just politicians and uh, people can you know, can announce as private citizens as they're switching, uh, maybe that would be useful too. Maybe we should start tacking some of these people on to, or maybe you should start tacking these people on to these news conferences at the State House or wherever. Uh, but, I, but I've stayed in the GOP, uh, you know, like I said, joined in 1984, and I've stayed in it all these years, I guess for the same reasons that Boris Yeltsin probably stayed inside the CPSU in the... 80s, he didn't really support the communist goals very much by that time, but I think he figured he could make the most change from inside the party. You know, if you look at these two relatively decent characters by government standards, uh, Boris Yeltsin and Mikhail Gorbachev, you saw how massive the amount of change was possible from inside the communist party. Another bright spot is if you if you look at Gilletta Jarvis, who's going to be running for governor on the LP ticket in, in New Hampshire this year. Again, she's doing the things that are within her power, right? She's not going to be able to win the governor's race, almost certainly. But 
You always see her putting herself out there. She's been placing herself to some extent at the disposal of free staters in the north to try and help with the situation up there. And again, really, it's not, it's not focused on free staters, it's just literally activists in general. But she's doing stuff. I see her all the time on my Facebook feed. It's not going to change the world in a week, but it's not worthless. So this is what the political libertarian party people in New Hampshire have been able to do, really without even staging any real publicity stunts. There's no, you know, they haven't had any any visual activities that I can even name. You know, if they just start doing that kind of thing, uh, photographable events, vin events that have something interesting to photograph, and they invite the press, I think that'll work <laughs> at getting publicity, not at winning any elections, except maybe local ones. Anyway. They've got my attention. Rare coins, pawns, gold, and silver bullion. Check out Port City Coin in Portsmouth, New Hampshire for your precious metal needs. A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. Happy to do a cash transaction. Why buy your metals from one of those slave state mints when you can support the free state economy? Visit PortCityCoin.com, or as I like to call it, PortCityCoin.com